Hi friends, I'm Jocelyn Peters and I'm the maker and designer behind Mountain Song Designs and welcome to this episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about so much knitting plus a trip that I went on recently and maybe some jelly that you may have heard about if you follow me on Substack and a book, a very intense book. So let's get to it. Let's start with some designs that I just recently came out with in case you haven't seen them. I have my Echo Lodge mitts. Of course, they are named for Anne of Avonlea. I love Echo Lodge. I wish I could go there. But these are the mitts with lace and some pretty lace here along the thumb. They match my uh, Echo Lodge socks. And if you were one of the people who bought these from me, I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Um, and if you'd like to check out my patterns, I'm on Ravelry and Etsy. It's under Mountain Song Designs or Jocelyn Peters. Uh, so that is my most recent pattern that is released. Now, today I get to share with you a pattern that will be coming out soon, a couple of weeks. And I've been so enjoying working on this. I have two samples for it. Last week, or well, last episode, I showed you a little bit of pink ribbing and I wondered if anybody knew what it was. You probably didn't, but here it is. This is the as if cowl. Here it is, see the plaid with pink. I loved the 90s and I love Jane Austen. And Clueless came out in the 90s and I loved it. I loved all the plaid and I loved it. The Cher always said as if. Um, I don't know if I can pull it off quite as well as she could, but let me show you this cowl. Here we go. Look at that, how fun is that? So it's a colorwork cowl. Um, there are a couple of versions with this. You'll see here there is a drawstring version because when I'm wearing a cowl, I love it to be poofy and warm and cozy. Uh, where I am in the winter, it gets really cold and I love having something at my neck uh, to keep me nice and toasty but I usually end up having to fold over the cowl with a pretty brooch, which is fine because that then I get to show off my pins and, and that's fine. But I thought how cool would it be if it were built in? So I have two versions of this. It's there is an eyelet with the drawstring and I have a second one that I'm working on that's just standard ribbing. Uh, so you can have either one that you prefer this is two colors, of course, with um, highly contrasting color. This sample uses Lolo Did It, Low Original. The pink is Beauty School Dropout, and that's perfect for back to school. Of course, don't drop out of school, but the Grease uh, reference and Hippo for Dia de los Muertos, which we're coming up on that season. Halloween things are everywhere already, and so it's already got me in the mood. Plus, let me show you this. Look at all of these colors. Look at those. Aren't those speckles just fun? They are all the colors that I think of when I think of um, Clueless. If you look at the fashions in that movie, so many bold colors, and this is perfect for it. So this is the As If Cowl. It's coming out in mid-September, right in time for cooler temperatures when you want something nice to go around your neck. And let me show the other sample that I'm working on I'm about halfway through it. This one uses minis. Oh my goodness, it's fingering weight. Uh, so it's mini, uh, it's advent season, mini season check this out now this one isn't blocked yet because i'm still working on it this one is blocked and you can tell that it lays a little flatter um, and this one is not yet but it will because blocking is magic and i recommend it for everything well pretty much everything but definitely for color work this is this sample uses the sheepy shire staple sock and the main color, that light tan, is milk chocolate. And um, the mini set is a fall mini set. 
The colorways are Merlot, The Count, I want to suck your blood. Um, let's see. One, two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, or I can't say it as well as I grew up listening to it on uh, Sesame Street. But uh, that one. And uh, Blue Velvet. Oh, look at these colors. So like I said, when it's blocked, it'll be all lovely and laying flat. But it has been so fun making this. Um, I love it when I have a pattern that I don't mind making multiple samples for because it tells me that I really enjoy the pattern. Now, I want to tell you something about this drawstring because I had planned on just having the standard ribbing, which I'm going to have on the mini skein set. And by the way, you need five 20 gram minis and one 100 gram skein uh, for the mini skein set. Um, nice, uh, nice contrasting colors and just one skein of each for the single CC version. Um, but I was kind of playing around with this and I realized, and I've, I have to tell you, I have for a long time been thinking about this cowl, but also thinking this would make a cute skirt because I think it would make a super cute skirt. Don't you think? Well, you know what? I have a kiddo who fits this. And I thought, you know, if it has a drawstring, she could totally wear it as a skirt. So I did that and she tried it on and she has claimed it for hers. This is no longer my cowl, it's her skirt until she grows out of it and then it's my cowl again. But, um, so if you have a little one that likes skirts, it's adorable, like so adorable but also a lovely cowl. So it fits two different ways of wearing it. But this has been so fun. Uh, I will talk more about it next time. I've already talked a lot about it this time, but I'm sure I'll talk more about it next time as well, uh, because that's what I do. And it'll be coming out about the same time as my next episode comes out. And that's it for my designs for now. So let's move on to the next thing. You may have noticed I'm wearing my Nyev shawl. Now I shared pictures of this the last time, but I have it back and I want to show it to you. Look at this. How gorgeous is this shawl? Isn't this beautiful? Oh my goodness. I, I don't know if I could be much happier with this shawl. It's so good. I love the beads. Um, I wasn't sure when I was knitting, knitting it if the white beads would stand out too much. I thought maybe it's a little too much. Maybe I went with the wrong color, but I love it. I love it. This is Madeline Tosh Prairie in Envy. And these are supposed to be glow in the dark beads. I don't think they glow in the dark, but that's okay. They're really pretty. And I love this pattern of lace and I am so looking forward to being able to wear this. It makes me feel fancy and I love it. And you know, the beads add a nice weight to the lace weight shawl. And sometimes it's, you know, a, a lace weight shawl. I mean, it's lace weight, it's light and it doesn't necessarily have the best drape depending on your uh, yarn and this, the beads are just perfect with this. I love it. Now I have a good bit more stash of Prairie. So I am looking forward to finding more shawls or similar, maybe some other lace projects uh, to make with this. Um, and speaking of stash, I'm writing a Substack post for this week that talks about stash. Don't be scared. It's okay. I'm not going to say that anybody's bad for having stash. I'm not going to say that you're great for having stash. It's just a fun little um, musings about stash. If you have not checked out um, my writings on Substack, I am Mountain Song Designs on there. Uh, if you subscribe to it, you get a weekly email. They're short. They are thoughtful, but also kind of lighthearted, uh, generally related to knitting. And when I have a pattern coming out, it's the best place to find the best 
discounts. That is where my best discounts are posted and you cannot find the best discounts anywhere else. I'll post a smaller discount um, other places, but that's the place for it. If you're subscribed, you'll be sure to have it on time as long as you check your email pretty regularly. So that is Substack. Um, oh, speaking of Substack, before I forget, look what I did. I made jelly. I made chicory jelly. So a few weeks, it may have been a month or two ago, and now I, I've lost track of time. But on Substack, I wrote a post called Roadside Beauties about flowers that I see along the road this time of year, and they are my favorites, corn flowers and Queen Anne's lace. Of course, I found out last year that we only call them corn flowers where I grow up, I guess. West Virginia, we call them corn flowers. I Googled corn flowers. That's not what came up, <laughs> but I figured out that they are actually chicory and chicory has lots of great uses. And I decided I wanted to see what the jelly would taste like. I've made other flower jellies before. It's very simple. The hardest part is gathering four cups of flower petals. If you can do that, then you can make flower jelly. And I tried this and it is delicious. Of course, as much sugar is in it, uh, it should taste delicious, but it has this nice flavor that comes just from the flowers. So if that's something that you have in your area, you should try it. Um, I just Googled flower jelly. Uh, there are lots of uh, different recipes for it. It's pretty sta straightforward. I did four cups of flower petals, no green leaves, four cups of water, steep it like uh, tea. Um, and then I had to wait a couple days, but then I boiled my tea after I, I got all the flowers out and strained it and boiled it, added in my sure gel, let that boil, added in four cups of sugar, let that boil. And then I, uh, I jarred them, canned them uh, using an oven canning method. Another thing I just looked up, uh, it works well and we've done it before. It's easy. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, and then you can have jelly from your backyard or your neighborhood for however long, you know, six or seven little jars of jelly last you. Um, so that is that, oh, it was so fun and it's delicious. So you should try it. Let's move on to the next thing. Time for whips. So like I said, I went on a trip last week and also, uh, oh, I should have mentioned this with Substack, but about two weeks ago, I posted a go bag knitting post. Do you guys have a go bag knitting project? It's always there, ready to go. You take it with you. For me, it's usually small, usually socks. Well, this is my go bag knitting a sock. It's the second sock. Here is the first sock. Oh, and I left a charm on there. Um, this is my Fade Into Neverland sock pattern. Um, I made a shorty pair. These are, I'm doing Christmas knitting early. Super simple, looks more complicated than it is because it's got that fun fade. Um, I changed it to one by one ribbing uh, when it goes into ribbing. So it could be a shorty sock. Uh, the recipient prefers shorty socks. And look at this, I'm playing with the color, so it's going to be um, a reverse. It'll be the inverse colors. I think it's gonna be so fun. And it'll be a Christmas project, that Christmas present that's done, ready to go early. I won't be knitting at the last minute, at least not on this. I'll probably be knitting on something on Christmas Eve that is for someone that needs to go under a tree. But I'll worry about that later. So that is my first whip. I'm hoping to get that done soon, but you know, it's my go bag, bag knitting. It's hard to say. Um, so it's hard to tell how long it'll take me and that's okay. It's there when I need it and it's fine. The other thing that I worked on that was easy to take with me is my Timely sweater. Timely by Libby Johnson, uh, Truly Myrtle. I've been working on this. I shared this with you. And look, I've got two sleeves. 
Got a sleeve here and a sleeve here. Look at that fade. How great is that? Oh my goodness. Mini skeins, love mini skeins because they're so easy. Now, because I have mini skeins, I wanted to make sure that I didn't run out and have um, odd sleeves, like have them not match because I ran out or, you know, didn't quite pay attention to how many grams and didn't get it perfect. So I did the sleeves first. And now as I go through the body, when I finish with a mini colorway, I just start with the next one. So I waste no yarn. And to be honest, I'm playing yarn chicken with this one, but I did some math and I think it'll be just about perfect. So fingers crossed, <laughs> hopefully it is. And if it isn't, it'll be good enough and it'll be fine. I just think it's so pretty. I should tell you what yarn I'm using. This is Lolo Did It Everyday Sock. Uh, the light one is Hippo for Naps, Fun Speckles. Um, the dark purple is Arised, and the rest are all minis that came with um, Hippo for Naps. And these are Lolo Did It Plush Sock, Yeti, and Sassanac. So that is the yarn I'm using. Okay. Give me a second. I have one more whip to show you that I talked about before, but it's, it's been put away for a while. So hang on one second. Okay, I will show you this whip a little bit, but I'm not gonna show it to you too much because here, let me show you the picture. This is called the Shetland Star Shawl. It is a traditional Shetland lace shawl, although it is a rectangle. It is a, it's based on a vintage pattern that appears in Outlander. If you watched this months ago, you probably heard me talking about it. And then I stopped knitting it to knit my Nayev shawl. So I'm back to it now. But look, let's see if I can get in there. Look at that shawl. I am so excited about this shawl. I think it's gonna be gorgeous. I think it's going to take a long time and be challenging. But I really enjoy a challenge. So not everything. I don't want everything to be a challenge. But I'm looking forward to this challenge. I'm not even really going to show it to you. It's in my bag. <laughs> you can see it. it has all the things. The red is either a cable for my uh, size zero needle. I think it's size zero. I don't think it's double zero. Size zero needle. And or it's the uh, provisional cast on. This is cobweb lace yarn. It's going to take a while. Um, it is by the Gossamer Web. It is Phoenix, their base Phoenix. It's the natural color. This little guy is uh, 2,600 meters. <sighs> it's a lot. Um, it's merino, silk, and cashmere. So it's going to be lovely. I started this a while ago um, and I had never done Shetland lace before and I'm wondering if maybe I should have done Shetland lace on like a worsted weight yarn and then worked my way down because um, when it's basically garter uh, with lace worked in um, and that's harder to see where you are and tell which if you're on the right side or the wrong side and I'm not used to it. Um, so when I, I have like 15 rows done, I think, um, and it, it was a long time. So I'm hoping once I get to the middle section, especially I might go a little faster. I don't know. We're going to see how it goes, but my goal is 10 rows a week. I hope I can stick to that. And if I can't, it's okay. But I like to have a goal to work toward. Uh, it helps me get things done a little bit quicker uh, and then I can move on to the next thing. But it'll be fun to, uh, to get this done and hopefully I can stick to it this time. So that is my final whip. Let's move on to, um, oh, I wanna talk about a trip. So here we go. Y'all, look at this yarn. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, so I went down south 
last week. It was a mini trip, mini vacation, and I got to go to one of my favorite yarn stores, the Stitchery at St. Simon's. It's a lovely yarn store and they have, half of it is yarn, great yarn, and half of it is needlepoint. And every time I go in there, which isn't very often, but every time I'm like, I'm going to do needlepoint. This looks great. But then I don't because I do yarn. So let me show you this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So you can see there Island Dye Works hand dyed on St. Simon's fingering sock. Look at these speckles though. Oh my gosh. I am looking forward to turning this into hopefully a couple pairs of socks. I made a shawl with, um, with this dyer's yarn a while back. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm looking forward to using it nice and plump and fun. It doesn't have a colorway name. It's just super speckle. I love it. Um, so I bought that and on one trip I bought this. This is Wonderland Yarns Marianne in Thorny Thistle and on this trip I forgot to take it with me but I remembered the purple well enough that I got this. It's also Wonderland Yarns Marianne in Forest Path and I think they look lovely together. I can't wait to make these. Now maybe I should try to get away from greens and purples but you know what they're so pretty together I can't help myself so I don't know what I'm gonna make with these I might get a little creative with them I don't know but um, that is what I purchased <music> Now, while I was there, I was I went to a couple different beaches, had a really lovely time. A couple, uh, we were also in South Carolina, so I'm going to share a couple of pictures here. And also we found shark teeth. One of my favorite things to do at specific beaches in the South, uh, at least where I've been in the South, was is to find shark teeth. I didn't really realize it was a thing until a few years ago, I was watching The Yarn Hoarder way back when she was still on YouTube, um, just regularly on YouTube. She talked about going to Ponte Vedra Beach and collecting all of these shark teeth. Well, you know what? We tried it the next time we were down there and it's so fun. We all, it's like a teeny tiny scavenger hunt. And so I will share a picture of our shark teeth here. So that's just a little bit of uh, some of my real life I'm sharing with you. I hope that you enjoyed some of those pictures. Um, I had a lovely time, but now let's move on to the last part. I'm going to chat a little bit about a book. Last thing, let's talk about a book. I finished this book, although I don't feel like I finished it. And let me tell you why. So it's The Once and Future Queen, Secrets of the Star-Crossed by Clara O'Connor. I read The Once and Future King, of course, the Arthurian legend years and years and years ago, and I loved it. And so honestly, that's what caught my eye when I was looking through um, books on the library, you know, on the library app. Um, and it sounded really cool. And I thought, well, I'll try it. Um, 
it had been a while because I had put a hold on it. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot the synopsis. And when I started it, I was a little confused. Um, but then I went back and realized it's written under the premise that the Roman Empire never fell. So once I remembered that, it made a lot more sense because it sounded a lot of like old Roman kind of thing with technology thrown in. And I was very confused. But it once I realized what was going on, it was it was great. Um, it deals with magic and Celtic magic um, and code and being, you know, being devoted to a code and technology versus chaos and magic. And we aren't supposed to use magic, but we need to give everything to the government. And, um, you know, the government helps you find your soulmate, but does it really? Um, so there's a lot of intrigue and political stuff in a good way, not bad political stuff, but you know, this dystopian uh, government, which the go is the government ever good in a dystopia, like Hunger Games and like, it's never good, right? Um, but it's a really interesting storyline. Uh, the characters are engaging. Um, the author uses, um, now I listened to the audiobook, so it was built into the audiobook for me, but the tone of uh, the narrator, it's in first person, it shifts a couple places. And so it clued me in that something was amiss. Um, and so I really appreciated that, that I thought we were doing one thing, but then the tone shifts and I'm, I was a little confused, but I was like, something's going on. Something was going on, but it is great. Um, it is, I guess, I think it would be considered new adult. Uh, it says young adult. I'm not sure how graphic young adult books are supposed to be these days. I don't know. Um, I personally consider it new adult, but you know, we all have our opinions about that and that's fine. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, something that was kind of interesting. As an American, I know a, a, some of English history, like from, you know, school and reading books and all that, but it talked more about um, specifics about English history, Hadrian's Wall and some specific uh events that i think if i were british i think i or you know from great britain i think i probably would have picked up more on the implications and caught on a little faster about the dystopian roman empire stuff um i think that threw me a little bit but um it made me wish i had studied a little bit more now maybe i'll go find another book um but I really enjoyed it. That being said, don't read this book if you don't plan to read the next book and maybe the third book. There are three books. It's a trilogy um, and it ends with a climax. And I was expecting denouement. Like I expect when I read a book, even if it's in a trilogy, I expect climax and then some type of resolution, even if it leads us into the next book. If you want that, don't read this book. If you're ready to read the next book, it's probably fine. Um, of course, my library doesn't have the next book. Uh, so now it's, well, maybe I can get it on Audible and I'm sure I could. But now I have a choice to make, uh, which, I mean, you know, that's fine. It's a minor problem. But just go into it knowing that you will not just want to read one book to try it out. You need to want to read all of them if you make it to the end. So hopefully that wasn't spoilery or anything, but um, it was a good book. Good book. Just be prepared to read the whole trilogy. So that's that. Side note, another book, uh, I told you before, um, I have been reading Wings of Fire. We just finished Moon Rising. It was so sweet. It's exciting and lovely, like all of the Wings of Fire books. If you want to listen to a book with your kid or just enjoy dragon books, um, 
it was it's a lovely start to it the next chapter yeah so to speak uh in the uh, wings of fire books so that's another one to keep your eye on if you're looking for something more along those lines so that my friends is it for me today thank you so much for joining me um and i will see you the next time it'll be a couple weeks in the meantime Make sure you check out my patterns on Ravelry and Etsy, uh, Mountain Song Designs or Jocelyn Peters. Um, check out Substack where you get something every single week into your uh, inbox if you subscribe, Mountain Song Designs. Um, I'm on Instagram, Mountain Song Designs. And that's it for me. So thanks for joining me. Slanjava and happy knitting. Country roads. Take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama. Take me home, country road.